The street corner soapbox. <laughs> the street corner soapbox with Foul So a Willing Podcast Takeover. We're making a killing. Music to nightlife. Debauchery and street news. Serving it hot. We are some street news. Movies and mayhem. The craziest guests. Words from chaos. Get it off our chest. Rhode Island worldwide. Dark corners in all places. Speak how we live, radio show, smoking aces. Ladies and gents, for the people we're talking, take the show on the road right where you're walking. Yeah. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Street Corner Soapbox Podcast coming to you live. The Street Corner yeah. Soapbox. Ha ha ha. If you're a fan of the podcast, you can help support the show by donating to our PayPal at paypal.me backslash street corner soapbox. That's right, guys. Make sure to like and share all of our episodes. And for easier access to our show, check out our link tree at l-i-n-k-t-r dot e-e backslash street corner soapbox. Uh, that's right, boys and girls. We're back. Street Corner Soapbox. I'm here with my brother, Lord Willing. Hey, how the hell are you? What up, what up, what up? What up? Yo, we got motherfucking Meta Peasy in the house. Meta P, tonight. Meta P, what up? Meta P. Can what's, I talk yet? You can. Up, now you can what's going on, guys? <laughs> I Good to up. see you, fellas. <laughs> I know. Too. I haven't seen Meta in over a year. Uh, he moved down to uh, uh, Tampa, Florida, and he's uh, back up for the holidays. And, uh, yes, sir. We're like, yo, we gotta, we gotta fucking have you come through the podcast. Have to, for sure. So there he is. A lot me, of history here. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> me, me and uh, me and Meta and, and Rob as well. We we definitely have some history, much of which I, I can't remember because it was, it was <laughs> this very, karate karate it, moves it was, karate moves in the living room. It was it was under the influence. A lot of, <laughs> a lot of, a lot of cocaine fighting at six a.m. Let's put it that way. Inspired. I mean, Rob wasn't part of it. He would just uh, I would leave. He'd just laugh at us. <laughs> <and shit. laughs> I would go to bed. <laughs> yeah, I'd go to bed and we'd be fighting. In fucking living room. <laughs> you know? Chris was chasing chickens in the parking lot. Yeah, that, happened. that happened. Oh man! So what's up, man? How's it going? Oh, it's going good, brother. You yeah, know, yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm in town, seeing all my friends and shit. Oh, oh, yeah. Came off a, a terrible fucking breakup. Sorry you, to hear that. You know, it happens, man. Yeah. You know, people are liars. <laughs> Yo, you ain't lying. You, know? you ain't lying. You ain't lying. You ain't lying. And it's, and it's, <laughs> and it's funny. Things. You know me, dude. Like, I, 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 you're a good dude, man. I, yeah, I am. And good like, heart. But this I trust guy, people. And this guy got a good heart, right? It doesn't yeah. matter, dude. You know what I mean? Like, it ha- it, it's going to happen to everybody, but yeah, no, it's just funny. It's just funny, man. There's all types of liars, and you run into different people, and yeah. you know what I mean? So it's like, you no know, doubt. shit, shit, you, we, we survive, man. We get yeah. the fuck up. Yeah. Yo, it's right, man. That's right. You got to, you got to fucking adapt to overcome. Come, yeah, push forward, man. Yeah. Um, so how's how's life down in Florida? Better than here, I guess. Tell the it's, people that know you that it, know you out here, tell them how life is down in Florida. It's it's awesome, honestly. Yeah. You know, it, it really is, man. Like I love it. Uh uh I mean you gotta like the heat, you know, like a lot of people yeah. are like, you know, they only go in the, the right. winter and shit. Right. And the other day it was fifty two. And it was yeah. like 54 here. And I was yeah. like, that's crazy. That Dude, that's like, hap- during the day. That's, hap- that's happened before. It was cl- it was warmer here than Florida. Right. Fucking nuts. I mean, maybe there's only climate six change, degrees. There's, climate's there, changing, bro. There's like two, there's like two months warming. a year that it can even hit that. And usually yeah. it's at night when you're sleeping. So it's not a big deal. Um, the weather usually is like, I mean, the week before I left, it was like 80 every day. And then at night, it, it hit like, you know, 60. It was like perfect. It's perfect. Yeah, that's not bad at all. When you relocated to Florida, was that your first time actually living there? Yeah, it's my first time with yeah. you. You would go down there. I remember you told me you go. You, you go well, down so there. I had been to the East Coast. I'd been to like Fort Lauderdale, Miami, okay. and I kind of knew that wasn't. Even though, like, you know, I love Fort Lauderdale, I love Miami, dude, but it's yeah. not. You don't want to live there. I don't picture yeah. living. More, in, I don't. I don't picture. Action. I don't picture meta living in Miami. No, dude. I'm like so the the Gulf. <laughs> you know, the Miami. the West Coast is more. It's more laid back. A lot of lot more Midwestern yeah. vibes. You'd be listening like to that. that Will Smith song every day if you lived down there. Yeah, dude, I'd be wearing like white shirts, like with fucking. I'd grow my chest hair out. Which, which you know, that, this shit hasn't been in full force since like you know high school. You know? So, so basically, what happened is like full I'm Italian force. and false, so maybe you can relate to this. I don't, I don't know. I'm, your, I'm southern. Your body. I'm the hairless thing ever. Oh, uh, okay, legs. okay. So I'm I'm Naples, so that's well, like yeah, north. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 so yeah, fucker. <laughs> so, dude, like I remember being at a barbecue and I was like 19. I'm wearing a basketball jersey, yeah. and my boy Casey's just like. Look at you, motherfucker. Shave your head. God damn it. That's gross. You know what I mean? Just talking shit on me, dude. And ever since then, I was like, all right, man, like, I got to keep this shit in check. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? Because it does get, you know, so kind of beastly. Wax, do you wax yourself? No, I don't wax. Do you, go wa- you don't go wax? No, nah, I just fucking I thought you did. run the shave over this bitch. I thought you, yeah. one time I saw you. Well, t- it's different with tattoos, no, too. I thought one time I, I thought I saw him take a selfie from the uh, waxing uh, tanning salon, whatever the fuck it's called. Are you sure, bro? 
Um, we got to bring I have up never Jamie. been waxed in my whole life that I know of. That <laughs> yeah, I know of. I mean, I've passed out a lot of places. Well, so that's true. Who I've the been, fuck I, knows? I've been there before. I know. <laughs> You've been waxed at least once. Yeah, I mean, if you, if maybe you know better than me, dude. I don't know. <laughs> well, there was that one time with fucking, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right. So actually, let's. Oh, so actually, I want to ask you too. How's the uh, COVID situation down in Florida? So, I mean, like, again, you know, like the Fort Lauderdale, Miami, like yeah. no one gives a fuck over there, dude. Yeah, like, yeah, I, I, I remember talking to people. Amen to that. I remember to t- like talking to girls who work in nightclubs and shit. Dude, the nightclubs are supposed to be closed. Yeah. These girls are still working. Yeah. Really? And no one has masks on. Like, I, like taboo. Yeah. Like, so what happened is like, you know, the government started going around and fucking, you know, shutting these places down physically because people were just rebelling. Yeah. And uh, but I know for a fact, man, all my friends in Fort Lauderdale and Miami are just yeah. like, dude, it's a free for all. Like, yeah, I saw videos yeah. of and, that. And yeah. and and the fact that like you know it closed in a lot of the country, people are still traveling there. So yeah. those people are like, oh, dude, oh fuck, oh, fuck yeah. you know anything goes here. And yeah. so that's where the numbers are really booming. I mean, where I live, uh, I live in Pinellas County, you know, which is like Clearwater, St. Pete, yeah, okay. all that shit. It's uh, it's an older population. Yeah. You know, we get a lot of tourists and shit, but yeah. a lot less this year. So laid back and. Yeah, are dude, near, and people you, people take it a little more seriously, dude. It's yeah. not as crazy over there. Are you near Cape Coral? Uh, Cape Coral is, like, way south. Yeah. I think it's, like, two hours south oh, of me. Oh, no shit. Yeah. Cool. So let's now let's take it back now. Let's go back to the, the beginning of, of Meta P. Let's go back to, obviously, for those that don't know, first of all, we didn't say it yet, but Meta, Meta P is a, <laughs> is a hip-hop artist. Uh, that's how me and him met originally, and we became friends from there. But, um... So let's let's get into the early days, a little bit of your background. I know you're originally from what St. Louis, right? Um, yep. Yeah, I, well, I was born in St. Louis, moved to Connecticut. Okay. You know what I mean? And then I grew up in the Barrington Riverside area. Okay, cool. And so, uh, so at what point? Um, we'll, we'll keep it music right now. But how'd what, you get in? How'd you get? Yeah. How did you get in, into the music? Honestly, skate videos, man. Yeah. So like, I I used to I used to skate. I used to do like aggressive rollerblading, mm. and. You know what I mean? All the videos were like, it was hip hop. It was like artifacts and Tribe Called Quest and shit like that. And so like when I was like 10 years old, I mean, that was the shit, man. You know what I mean? Plus my older brother like always would bring tapes home from school and shit. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, like Beat Nuts and shit like that. And I'd be like, what's what's this? You know what I mean? Because I I just used to listen to like Guns N' Roses and shit like that, (laughs) you know? And so, but, you know, from 10 years old on, I was obsessed. I was obsessed, man. I, I used to play the bass. And then when I was like 12 years old, I traded my bass and my amp in, and I got turntables and a mic. Uh, and 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 my I bought like 10 records the first time, right? And I used to mix the fucking acapellas versus the beats. Mm-hmm. Oh, and then I started blast. freestyling over the beats. Okay. And you kind know, of from similar, there, yeah, I kind of had a similar experience actually. That's funny. I mean, it's like the it was yeah. the best shit in the world, dude. I was yeah, like, I, dude, bro, I can't believe you can do this. <laughs> you, just, yeah. you know what I mean? Like you just put a beat on and start, you know, rhyming words and. Then, you know, I had a couple buddies get into it, um, one of which was DJ Remini, who just came yep. in. Shout out to my boy DJ yep. Remini. Just came in number three at the DMCs this year, which Boy, is right. the highest he's ever placed. Nice. I mean, that's fucking cute. For those that don't know, that's a yearly uh, big DJ battle. It's a turntable championships. Turntable championships. Yeah. We actually, Rhode Island's own uh, DJ Perseus won it many years. Shout out to Perseus. Perseus is I ain't seen him in years, monster, but he's dude. fucking nasty. Yeah, I don't know what he's up to, but no. he, did dude, you, he was... Did you, uh, did you have a Gemini starter kit? Was that your first pair of turntables? <laughs> no, you know what? I, uh, I didn't have a Gemini, but they were terrible. But I remember I got... Um, I, I got New Marks. Yep. Okay, which was... Okay, a, a, yeah. For those who don't know, it's a company out in North Kingston. Yep. And... They only had one direct drive, and the other one was a belt drive. So, like, I could only cut when I was lining my one. cuts. I could only cut on the fucking, <laughs> yeah. on one side. Yeah. For, you know, because, you know. I didn't know they were fucking from North Kingstown. Well, yeah, yeah. The, that's where they're located. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's where they're from. The girl, from, there, there was really? this girl, Bailey, and I went to high school with her in Barrington, yeah. and she, you know, rich as fuck. Yeah. And she was, her dad had a Mercedes, and it was Newmark was the uh, license plate. Oh, really? Oh, wow. no shit. Like, Holy well, shit, yeah. Oh, so he worked for the company? I tried to it? date her. She was oh, not into me. No, she I was like a scrub to her, dude. She wasn't fit. Did you, like, maybe Well, she make was like, you know, she was one like of the that? more, like, a lot of girls are really, like, preppy there. So, oh, like, yeah, she was yeah, not, yeah, yeah. She was not into my vibes. Oh, that's six, a whole. She was pretty hot, too. Like, honestly, Bailey, if you're still available, I'm interested in the Newmark hookup, and I am newly single. Yeah. And, um. You know, I, I look the same as high school. I've aged pretty well. Uh, my credit score hey. is over 700. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm disease-free. So, Bailey, oh, if you're your, listening. That's your nerve. 
Holla at me. <laughs> COVID free. Anyway. Bailey, if you hear this, please contact Metapy right away. <laughs> yeah. Um, young Page Taco. Me. Young Taco on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. um, all right. So you started DJing. Were you making any like mixtapes or freestyle tapes or anything like that? Dude, I used to record everything. Yeah. I had tapes of terrible freestyles. Yeah, I that, did like, too. Yeah. Probably would make yeah. me want to take my own life yeah. if I listen no, now. No. <laughs> no. And so, uh, <laughs> the other thing I did is I had like I had a uh, beat machine. And it was uh, like a, yeah. it was like a boss or a doctor. Yeah, yeah, boss. Or, I think I it was had, boss. I had a boss. Dude, oh, yeah, that sounds. Yeah. It, it was like an 808 yeah. underwater. <laughs> like it was the worst <laughs> shit in the world. So I, but I would use that, and then um, I would use Magics, which is like a cheap that. version of Acid. Okay. Yeah. And I would I would sample and make beats. Oh, so you're making beats too. So early I, on, when, when we were 13 or 14, me and DJ Remedy started. Like I would make the beats. He would do the cuts. I would do my rhymes. Yep. And yeah, man, we uh. T- we, we were terrible. We weren't good, you know, because wow. we were suburban kids trying to fit yeah. like the super urban mold. Yeah. And but the more we played out and and practiced, obviously you Got get better. better, but, better. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, our first couple tapes. I mean, Jesus, man. Yeah. So wow. what was the progression from that to actually making good music at that time? I mean, dude, I think it was like I, I remember like one of the first big shows I did is I opened up for Idea. Um, okay. Rest in peace. Idea was uh, Atmosphere's yep. like second in command. Yep. Uh, opener on tour and shit. And, was that uh, at the Met Cafe? Yep. Uh, Dude, it, like, when I was supposed Cafe. to be, and then they moved it. Ryan Gummersall from ninety point three. I vaguely remember that show. Yeah, they might have been there. They uh, they couldn't do it at the Met. They moved it to East Greenwich to like the coffee shop on East Greenwich on Main Street. Okay. No fucking joke, dude. It was sold out. Really? It was uh, idea and I abilities. It was a uh, blueprint that dude yeah, blueprint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yep. Someone else, DJ Bird. Yeah, okay. And yep. uh, and then us. Dope. And we opened. That and was your first show. That was like the, my first big show. Like that was in Johnson Mountain Cafe. Or what, what no, was, what no, was East Greenwich. No, East Greenwich. No, Met, the Met Cafe originally was downtown. It was what, downtown. What yeah. was the one in Johnston and gone killingly? Oh, uh, oh, Coda Lounge. Coda, Coda Lounge. Lounge. Yes. Oh my God! I did a couple. Speaking I did a, of, I did a couple hey, of guess what? Dude, dude, flawless, flawless. Who just won that big Netflix yeah, thing? Yeah. Dude, he played there every week. Him and yeah. Crisis. That's and why. Like that's that. why. Crisis. They were that's there every week. I used to. I used to record with Crisis. He was my engineer when I was like fucking. I don't know. This is years ago. I haven't talked to him in years, man. But he was one of my favorites. Man. He was really dope. Crisis and was really dope. He just fell back from if, the music. He, I don't know why. If but he hears this, hit me up. Let's do a collab. Uh, Jesus, me, you, Meta P, we'll get a yeah, collab Yeah, that kid going. was like the best nah. punchline rapper. Yeah, he was nasty, man. State. I remember back in the oh, day. Um, a dirty unicorn coming in soon. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, Perfect. Um, <laughs> so anyway. So, so yeah, so basically playing out, you know what I mean? And then obviously, you know, I, I, I graduate high school and, you know, I'm in Providence all the time. Yep. And I'm meeting all types of people outside of like, East Providence and Bristol and Warren and Barrington and you know what I mean? You're meeting people from all over, dude. Yep. And it just really helped progress, you know, because you're working with this producer, that producer. You're going to real studios. The first real studio we went to, I think I was 18. Um, Actually, I mean, I was 16 the first time I was there. I was 18 the first time I recorded like my own EP there. And this dude, uh, it was called Danger Studios. It was on bro- off a of, uh, Trash Street, which is off a of Broad Street. Right in the middle of the hood. This dude, Joe Danger, rest in peace, did everything analog with the reel to reel. Really? And the shit came out fire. Wow. And And what year year was this? This is 2001, 2002. And you were still using analog, huh? Yeah. Yeah. You know, dude, like it came out good. Yeah. So that was your first release? Uh, that was like my first professional, like real release. professionally recorded release. What was it called? I never heard that one. Um, so it was me, my boy Phoenix, what Dirty Randy. Randy. Dirty Randy has Randy's entered the, the building. building. <laughs> um, my first, it, it was called Dharma. Okay. Right. Dharma is like your. Well, you know what Dharma yeah, is, right? Because you studied. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like your responsibility. Yep. Um, it was me, my boy Infinite, and my boy Phoenix. Um, uh, Infinite's from Boston. Phoenix is from Jersey. Okay. We all met in Providence. Uh, but it was like uh, we had a group called Dead Poets, and that was like the first. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember that name. No. Yeah. Dude, we I didn't to, even know that. Did yeah. You, you, Randy, that was your group. Yeah. yeah. What up, buddy? Yeah, yeah. One See, of a few I, groups. I've known you for a fucking minute, and I don't. I never even. I don't even think I knew that. You never told me that. John. Randy, what's going on, bro? What up? What up? Dirty Randy in the house. Randy, Randy's, the, Randy's the, he's the co-feature today. He's already been on the podcast. So. Yeah, he pops in and out. He's just gonna, <laughs> Randy's just gonna interject uh, but, every, every, every. But once basically, in a while. yeah, man. So I mean, it go, it goes from there. You, you start doing shows. You yeah. get the response. You're opening up for like dudes who are really in the game. 
yeah. and they're giving I you know. advice. Yeah. You know what I mean? If they're cool enough. Yeah. You, you know, like I remember Idea talking to me about pauses. He's like, dude, you fill all your lines. Why are you doing that? Yeah. You need to pause and let shit sink in sometimes. Yeah. That was, I, I remember that to this day. Yeah. That was fucking over 20 years ago, dude. Or, you know? Stuck with you the whole time. Right. Yeah, great yeah. advice. But, uh, but yeah, man. And then, you know, Things started rolling, but basically it's like the people who stayed consistent, yeah. the people who worked the hardest, you know, not only do you get better, but people want to work with you because they're yeah. like, oh, this dude, his name's all over the place. He's always popping up. Uh, he has a following. So I built a local following and then that led to a lot yeah. of other things, you know? What was, just to go back a second, what was that Netflix thing you were talking about? That uh, it was called like, Rhythm and Flow or something like was that. Was it a contest? Yeah, it was, it was basically like the voice for rappers. Oh, okay. And uh, uh, Flawless came in second. Okay. But, you know, the mayor gave him the key to the city. Oh, yeah. He's all paid now. Really? I mean, that kid works hard, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, me and him aren't tight or anything. I, yeah, we've yeah. worked together on a few things. But okay. that kid is one of the best natural performers I've well, ever that's seen. That's cool. That local you know? uh, local artist won that. Yeah. Or, or came in second. Un- unfortunately know, for him, even he had this that, big tour yeah. set up and then COVID happened. Yeah, so, like, yeah, he, he didn't yeah. really get to reap the uh, fruits. But they just did some sort of live concert. Yeah. And I like guess they virtual, set virtual. a record. Yeah. Or whatever on that website, like sure. you know, like two million people or four million right. people is a lot. Cool. Uh, yeah. So he's he's doing his thing, man. So so um, all right. So you put that EP out with the Dead Poets. That was the group you were in. Yep. And where did where did it go from there? Um, one more thing I want to talk about is okay. back in the day we actually used to do ciphers. Yeah. Oh yeah, I remember. Dude, you would gain all types of fans. All type you get all types of pussy. Yeah. You fucking get all types of respect. You you meet other dope rappers. Like you would do ciphers, and honestly, there weren't a lot of white rappers. Yeah. So like I remember being at URI during Rush Week. You know what I mean? And all it was like me and like you know a bunch of black and Latino dudes and shit from like New York and Jersey and shit. And dude, I was smoking all of them. Yeah. And we had like fucking fifty people. Like you can ask DJ Remedy, dude. And it's crazy it's crazy the uh, like the amount of attention like dude i i'm still know people from that cypher like who i became friends with yeah, yeah. Uh, another dude uh my boy deuce who fucking um i i met uh he was another rapper in the cypher you know what i mean like it's crazy man like that was a way to build yourself now it's annoying yeah and people can't freestyle for shit anymore they just spit <laughs> no, ratings no. and shit well back basically in the day, nowadays no actually nowadays the way a lot of these dudes are rapping. It's it's almost like a bad freestyle anyway. It really is. You know what I'm saying? Like, Bro, it's, it's like it. someone ODing in all the stages. You know what I mean? Uh, so what were you up at? You all right? You said doing those uh, ciphers? Yeah, well, yeah. I went. No, I mean, we were just at a, like a fucking, it's rush week. So we were at one of the frat parties because yeah. that's where all the chicks go. And uh, yeah, dude, we're like in the fucking hallway. Word. And we start rapping, and then, you know, it was like that white people curiosity with like, ooh, you know, what's going on? Urban stuff, you know? <laughs> white, so like, people, white people fucking, curiosity. Dude, before we knew it, we had like all these fucking people, dude. It was it was amazing. Randy knows a lot about white people curiosity. Don't <laughs> yeah, yeah that's curious. a real thing. Like, you know what I mean? It's like in Family Guy where, where they're at the Barrington Country Club, and, uh, and he sees a black guy, and he goes, ooh, a black guy, ooh, neat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Did you go up to ninety point three? I was. I mean, I used Dude, to go all up the to time. Nine, I used to go up to ninety point three all the time. So uh, shout out to my man DJ Ella. Sturby Rock too. Sturby Rock. Um, Sturby Stur- Rock Radio. I I wanted to go uh, uh, to URI. I didn't get in because I was a stoner and I never went to class and I. Was too busy. That was like everybody at URI sell it, right selling selling weed. <laughs> yeah, but they're from out of state. Dude. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> so they're, they're getting out of state tuition. Like they they limit the in state. I, I think at the time we were paying eight grand. They were paying like twenty eight grand. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like they'll take anyone, dude. But if you're from in state, like they don't want you unless yeah, you unless you're an I never went student. to college, but I've been to URI. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, so but right. I did an internship. <laughs> For like my senior project, like we, we had to do a senior project. It's like, what do you want to do? And I'm like, yeah. well, I want to fucking be a rapper, DJ, host. So I I, I interned at um, when I was 17 at one and two Tuesdays with DJ Ella and DJ Cruz at oh, 90.3. Yeah. And then ever since then, man, yeah, I DJ mean, I, Ella. I used to Starby Rock's one of my good homies, yeah. even though we don't talk a lot anymore. He's always one of my best friends. Yeah, uh, I used to co-host with him almost weekly for years. Uh, I think I remember that. I too. used to just host for him, dude. Yo, you know. Now you can attest to this. Randy could probably attest to this. I don't know, if Rob, if you were listening, but for me, 90.3 was fucking vital, dude. Like, dude, it was it was huge. It was yeah. vital. With Sage and DJ Mac. Oh yeah, and dude. I, dude, I would go home huge, from school. It was dude. a huge look. I was skip fucking basketball practice to listen to 90.3 bro like sage had two 
True School Tuesdays. True Schools, yeah. Mech had fucking was Blazing 90.3 with Roman Rock on yeah. Friday. On Roman I Rock mean, and just Funk great, Funk of Fleet. Yeah, great, great yeah. fucking yeah. radio. It just started like 4 you know? o'clock every, every day, right? Three. Three, 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 three to six. Three to six. I remember yeah. just waiting like, oh, yes, it's coming bro. on soon. I would tape <laughs> it. I'd have my tape ready, dude. I'd fucking be next to the stereo and fucking boom. When, when the, the mixes, would, like Mech would come on and start DJing and fucking, they had all kinds of DJs up there. I mean, I mean, we could probably go down the list. Yeah, dude, that lefty you know, used that, to yeah, DJ all, there. All fucking, kinds of DJs. All kinds of DJs. But um, I used to love that station. So, yeah. I mean, for us coming up in, in Rhode Island hip-hop, New England yeah. hip-hop, that was a staple. And it, you know, and this is before, like, the internet. You yeah, know what I mean? I mean, yeah. we had Basement Flavor. We had UndergroundHipHop.com. Yeah, hip-hop. That, com, was, that was, like, the beginnings but it's like, of it. Yeah. It, that live streams weren't a thing. How about that yeah. Apathy and Sage fucking freestyle session? It's, uh, it's dude, famous. Like a classic. Shout, Shout out, out to, to my Apathy. man Apathy. Yeah, yeah. yeah Apathy is a fucking solid yeah, dude. Yeah, man. Yeah, great. Love that dude. Great man. rapper, Connecticut. You know, I'm yeah. sure a lot of people out there know who he is. But um, yeah, man. So that's dope, man. You know, I, I I have similar memories of coming up. I think every fucking dude, you know, hip hop dude, you know, probably yeah. shares those similarities. Right. Um. Okay. So then, w- where to go from there? Uh, so, you know, basically from that, I mean, we're, we're doing shows out every week. I started doing my own shows in like Bristol at this place, J.R. Bean. Oh yeah. I did a show there. Yeah. I did a show there. We were packing, we were selling the fucking shows out. Yeah, man. And then uh, I was working with Lingo a lot. Me and Lingo, he he was, you know, I'd record with him. We we started splitting the shows. Shout out to Lingo. I mean, dude, we were, we were killing it for years. Did you ever go up to 88.7? No. Lingo had a radio show up there. I used to go up there. Yeah. Dude, Lingo was like Probably, fucking. He was in college. Not with him. And he, well, he was calling himself linguistic still at the time. Yeah, linguistic. And, and, and yeah, he, yeah. yeah, and he had the radio show. And me and uh, a couple of people, we were kids still. We, we'd fucking go up there, dude, and fucking rock out on the show. He would just yeah. be like, "Yo, come through, fucking whatever," and uh, freestyle and like fucking fuck around. But I loved college radio back then, man. <laughs> yeah, you know. No, I know for for sure. It so, was it was everything. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like yeah. people, but the the numbers were crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I remember. Yeah. I mean. Just the shit we used to get, dude. Like the promo the material and yeah. shirts and shit we used to get. Yeah. That's reflective of how big the numbers were. Like I remember, you know, going in and they're like, dude, you want a t-shirt? You want a hoodie? You want a fucking, you know what I mean? Hell like, yeah. because these artists are trying to get on the station. Oh yeah. yeah. And, and then it went from that to just, you know, fizzling out over so, the years. So uh, you were working with Ling, you said you started working okay, with Lingo. Okay, so yeah. So basically we were killing the local game. Um you know, and then there there came a certain point where I was like 27, 28, where I really started getting like big shows and I really started getting a name and I started working with That's established underground started. artists. Yeah. You know what I mean? Apathy, right. self-titled, yep. Black McLeod, yep. Rex, all yep. those dudes, that, you know, Rex. Boston dudes, Shout Connecticut dudes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, you're working with good producers. You know, I met MDOT. Yep. Shout out to MDOT. Um, and then, you know, so fast forward a couple of years, you know, MDOT's invite me on European tours. I've been on three tours with them. Um, he's a great dude. Uh, we were supposed to go on tour actually this last March. He was already out in Germany, right? And this shit's going on. Yeah. Um, he's calling me and he's like, dude, they're shutting the borders down. He goes like, he did a show with the beat nuts in Switzerland. And then he's staying with my man, uh, DJ Mac, another DJ Mac, DJ mechanic, my boy in Cologne, Germany. And he's staying with them. And he's like, I'm supposed to meet him in Estonia. We're doing like Estonia, uh, uh, Prague, uh, Slovakia, Eastern Germany, shit like that, like right near Poland. And all my boys from Poland were going to come yeah. fucking see us, dude. We were 20 Polish miles from the border. Baby. And, dude, literally, it was the day we were supposed to leave. Like, I have all my bags packed. Like, I have someone watching my dogs. Uh, you know what I mean? At the, like, my brother was watching my dogs, and my boy Jason was going to watch them because we were going to be gone for, like, three weeks. Fucking, he's calling me. This kid never misses shit like he never gives up he never he, he doesn't sleep he's a fucking animal like shout out to m dot one of the most productive consistent people uh not easy to tour with dude yep he's not he's like a he's I like a basket i remember you telling me <laughs> i didn't play sports dude so like i don't i don't listen well to direction and yeah, authority yeah. and this kid dude he'll be like you're disappointing me like fucking do better <laughs> Wait, you know I, thought, I, mean? I thought you were like, on the polo the polo team for barrington uh, I didn't, I didn't make it because my, you know, I didn't have a horse. You know what I mean? My, my family only could afford a mini horse. <laughs> so unfortunately that, that, put me, that, put, that put me at a disadvantage with the other players. <laughs> um, no man, but like, anyway, so, uh, what was I talking about? Oh yeah. We, so the day we're supposed to leave, dude, Trump announced that travel ban. 
Yeah, so yeah. M Dot's, you know, he's he's freaking out. He comes back home, quarantines himself. We didn't end up going, dude. Three hours before I was leaving for the airport. Didn't they shut? Didn't they shut the airports down? Didn't they? There were there was. No I mean, they, they weren't Europe, fucking right? around for those first yeah. couple of weeks. Like, dude, it would it would have been really stuck there, dude. Yeah. It would have been. He was like, so we had two shows in Estonia. So he's like, just do the Estonian shows. He goes, and I got to go home to my kids. Yeah. He goes, you can run the rest of the tour. You got hotels, food. You can keep all the money. And I'm like, for him to talk like that, I was like, I fuck Some, no, dude. Something's fucking if up. you're not going, to <laughs> yeah. me, he's like a superhero. So I was like, if yeah. you're not fucking going, dude, if you're scared of this shit, yeah. fuck that. You know <laughs> um, what I mean? <laughs> now, you you released some albums, though, too, um, solo albums. Um, I know I know. there's a couple solo albums you dropped, a couple EPs. Yeah. Uh, just run through those real quick for the so people the, that the, don't know out there the, that I mean, want to listen. So I did a couple with Eighth Wonder, who's a local producer from Rhode Island. Yep, dude, he's a Wonder. legend. One of my favorite producers of all time. Uh, Off the Rock was in 2009. Um, I just had, you know, local features on that one. Edison Zinc, another one, just yep. local features. But, you know, it had Rhode Island Reds, which is probably to even date Banger. my biggest song. Banger. Rest That's in peace, 2011. Too, yeah, rest in peace, Terry. Yeah, I was yeah. at his grave yesterday. Um, and... Then after that, I did Evolution of the White Wolf, yeah, which was a, 2015, yeah, that's a banger, yeah. and that that was when I started getting established. That's yeah. when I had talk about who you, talk about that one because that's a pretty big album, right there. I mean, dude. So I had you know Block McCloud was like kind of helping me uh, put some stuff together using his connections, uh, mixed a couple of the joints for me, did a couple features. But you know, I was also cool with Apathy at that point, um, and you know he was helping me get people. And so, you know, I have Apathy, I have Slain, I have Rex, I have Chip Fu from Fushnikens, who just does, like, reggae. Yeah. Uh, uh, self-titled, did I say self-titled? Yeah, no, no, well, earlier you did, but yeah, yeah self-titled. Yeah. I mean, and then we did, like, an animated video for that, which, yep, like, yep. at the time, they, they weren't coming out. Um, it got a lot of good attention. Uh, and then uh, after that, you know, I, I, I was stagnant for a few years. I was doing, I was basically touring with that album. Like, I toured, I did a couple Midwest tours. Yep. Um, you know, did a couple European tours. And then uh, I did in 2019, you know, I did a, the record with you, the Van Buren Boys. Yeah, everyone should go get that Van Buren Boys. The best work and you've ever done. It's sick, it's sick. <laughs> we had a blast doing it. We recorded then, it in, in his basement. Uh, illicit substances involved, definitely, at that time. Oh, for and, sure. And we were, we were in Metapes' <laughs> fucking basement. A lot of songs didn't get Kentlin, finished, but uh, yeah. we had a blast. Everyone we Ken, did, I assure Kentlin, you. Kentlin, <laughs> Kentlin, uh, Kent, was it Av? Kentlin, Av? Kentlin, Kentlin Street. Av, yeah. yeah, bro. That was, oh, my God. Yep. Randy, Randy was around for some of those yeah, times. Yeah, I think I'm on one of those hooks, though. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Van Gogh, Van, Van, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and you know, um, and then I did uh, the same year. I did Never Walk Alone, yeah, which was good, another EP. I'm, I'm still EP. really, really proud of. Yeah. Um, it was a six song EP, but just I, I instead of just putting out like twelve songs, I was like, dude, you know what? Fuck this. I want no features, and I want to put out the best songs. Like yeah. I don't want to put out twelve songs where six are okay. I put out six. Yeah. Uh, mm. My favorite. They flow together. And then, um, you know, I just started working on some new shit, uh, my new album, you know, which I, I don't want to talk about yet. But, uh, you know, we put in work today with Vertigo at Beatbox. Shout out to Vert, it. man, my dude. Uh, my man M-Dot was there. Uh, did it? Did a feature for me and Lord Willen for yeah. the new Van Buren boys. Stay tuned for that. He also, he's been producing beats during COVID because he doesn't know what to do when he's stuck at home. So he has become a no bullshit, like, fucking producer. Yeah. This dude has made a hundred and... 20 beats huh. he's Yo, made M. thousands I need some beats bro Send he's made like beats. 5G's making beats oh, word nice and he has all kinds of cosigns from like people like he dude he gave beats to Smith and Wesson oh, and like Beat dope. Nuts and oh, like yeah. they're using them nice like that shit's crazy Hell dude yeah. so shout out to M. Dot again yeah. um, you dropped but, some vinyl too uh, at one point right I did yeah I did a Rhode Island Reds vinyl um, you know it had T Swan Naughty Eighth Wonder and Miles Grimes shout out to Miles Grimes yeah. Um, I had it had the uh, self titled track with uh, uh, called Kill Swag, yeah, and then yeah, it yeah. had Dragonfly, which was a tribute to my pa my uh, deceased twin sister Lindsay. No doubt. Um, and then it also had you know all the instrumentals, and then it had a scratch kit that was uh, DJ Remedy put together um, on there for you know DJs to do the wiki wikis or whatever. Yeah, yeah sir. So Shout out to the DJs. It's still like magic to me, dude. Yeah. I don't know. I don't and know. And you dropped doing. a lot of music videos too. At, at one point, we yeah, were doing a were ton doing of music videos. videos. It's one of those things, man, where it's like, it, to be honest, life, life kind of happened. You know, like I got a, I got a no bullshit job. I was making really fucking good money. You know, I was in a relationship, bought a house. You're, you're getting into life. So you're, you're still doing music, but you're realizing what it takes. I mean, when you, when you actually know people who have made it, yep. you see what it takes and yep. you're like, 
dude, I wouldn't want to do that. Yeah. I don't want to tour eight months, mm-hmm. nine months out of the year. Yeah, especially. What kind of fucking life can you have, dude? Especially, uh, it's awesome to if it you're yourself. 20. Yeah. Dude, if you're 20 and that happens, like, yeah. fucking do it, man. Yeah, fuck fuck every chick. Kids and shit get in fist fights, difficult. fucking get arrested. Yeah. Do whatever you want, dude. <laughs> especially. Take all the drugs. <laughs> especially. But you're, 30, you're 30 years old, dude. You want, you know, yeah. you, dude, how are you supposed to keep a chick? Yeah. Like, I wouldn't trust a chick who did that for a living. Yeah, you fucking real. kidding me? I mean, you know, like, especially on the indie scene too, because it's all, it's kids, mostly mostly DIY. It? It's very hard to like run a have a family, have responsibilities like that, and then yeah. also try to be a full time fucking musician or artist. It's, it's very hard. Oh, so, for sure. I mean, the blueprint well, one, really is to not have any of that other stuff. One part, just one part's gonna lack. You know what I mean? Huh? One part's gonna lack in that. You know what I mean? Whether yeah. it be your family life, or you might not dedicate as much time to your music. Yeah. Because one's gonna op. You yeah. know what I mean? You yeah, have to prioritize. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Especially with, but, you, I mean, with kids. Dude, a girl, you might be able to. She just might not be like, oh, I'm not, you're not going to be able to. Well, you got to find you, one that understands yeah, the business. what you want to do, and that's I mean, very dude, hard. You'd but have you're to gonna be miss, a, you're gonna miss, you're gonna miss Christmas. You're gonna uh, miss holidays. Birthdays, well, you might, you, you know? might, yeah. But you Dude, should look at even like Tech Nine. Yeah, Tech Nine's a, one of the richest. He was on the yeah. Forbes list, man. Yeah, yeah. I know. But that guy tours nine months of the year. Yeah. They told him years ago he's still drinking, but they yeah. were like, "Dude, you're gonna die if you keep drinking." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, "I just don't care." But he's like, he talks about it. He's like, "Dude," he goes, "You know, I make money. I fucking own all my own shit. I own all my own masters." He was one of the first guys to really right. do that and care about it and have his own label. And he goes, "And I tore my fucking dick off." Yeah, oh, he tore. You know crazy. what I mean? Yeah, you have to though. That's where the money is now because the record there's not really much record sales. So there's, you, there's no you record have sales. To tour. The streams are bullshit. Yeah, but what about the right now? Streaming sites really killed. Touring. You downloads. have to have hundreds of millions. And of even streams. before that, Ar- yeah. Ar- Aries and uh, what was the other one? Oh, oh, Soul Seek and Napster fucking and Napster shit? and yeah. fucking yeah. LimeWire. Yeah, dude, they. Ki- I mean, they Napster, killed. They killed that LimeWire. shit well, first. Yeah, but not as bad as when fucking all these streaming. Not services. as bad as the bootlegger from um, outside of the arcade in downtown Providence. <laughs> <laughs> Where I bought my Method Man to Caltech. Hell yeah, dude. I remember, the, I remember guy, bootleggers, when, man. He's probably rich as fuck. Yeah, no, I'm probably. kidding. He's probably dead in the fucking ditch <laughs> 20 years ago. Um, no, you're right, though. The, the streaming, I mean, there are some people making money off the streams, but you have to have a lot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you got to so, get, you're, I'm talking like 50, 60, 80, 70, yeah. 100,000 fucking million streams, dude. It's not, you know, to, to really see real he, money. You know what I even mean? Even then, man, you, 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 your, money is coming, exactly. your money is coming from merch. And shows. It's coming f- in shows. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and no, like appearances definitely. and features. Yeah. Well, it's like Tech Nine like got all the time in the world, touring for nine months out of the year. Now you haven't been able to tour yeah. nothing. Well, yeah. thankfully for artists like that at that level, they can still sell a lot of merch. Probably, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And he might. We got royalties on shit too. Yeah, people he, are making shit work right now. Yeah, they and he to, might have know? enough streams where he might see some decent income from his shit too. You know what I mean? But but overall, dude, like it's tough. Well, like, he can. But then again, he could go to Florida. You would think like, Florida. okay, let's just say you're a pretty well established artist, right? And you're getting I don't know fifty, sixty thousand streams a month, right? That's not really much. That might be a couple grand, dude. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, that's fucking. And nothing. imagine, imagine the budget <laughs> or the cost yeah. of of you or the label to generate those streams. It's crazy. Like, you gotta have serious artists, serious production, yeah, it's... fucking uh, real real uh, publicist pushing that shit and marketing it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you gotta you gotta be present. You gotta have all types. Of, you're paying all types of people. Yeah. To get those streams, yeah. so yeah, it's a very uneven industry. It is. Um, well, they need it, to do it, something it, about and, it, too. and that's why it's basically right now, man. It's like people are like, oh, it's easier to go independent than ever, and it's like maybe, maybe depends. I think you know what I mean. Yeah. And it's like if it's easier to go independent than ever, then why is everyone making the same shit? Yeah, there yeah. used to be diversity in music oh, yeah. because people were selling records. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like when Busta Rhymes came out, he wasn't like pop. No. Do you know what I mean? No. He does pop records now. They're still yeah. dope as fuck. Yeah, I mean his new album. Beast. His new album is fucking dope, and it's not really. But I mean, but remember, like I mean, dude, the early '90s, like Das FX was oh, making money. Yeah. yeah. They were doing I the diggity wiggity shit. Like well, that wasn't man. mainstream. No, dude. But there, but it, there was diversity because yeah. you know they weren't selling as many records as fucking ice, uh, like uh, Vanilla Ice, Vanilla Ice, <laughs> or fucking yeah. uh, MC Hammer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? But well, like there was a place for them. I agree. Because there was, you could make money. You didn't have to sell the fuck out or, or, or just do one type of music. I but agree. when that diverse, when that stream of revenue disappeared, the diversity disappeared. Yeah. And it makes complete sense to me. Yeah. Well, you know what I mean, like coming up, you know, you, you heard, you know, all kinds of artists were getting. There wasn't such so much division between underground and mainstream. You heard artists like Wu Tang on the radio, Onyx. I say this shit all the time. Yeah. Fucking Lords of the Underground. First time I heard them was on yeah. fucking Kicks One Hundred Six. Dude, you know Wu Tang. I mean? like, Wu Tang built a cult following. Dude. Oh yeah, no doubt, and that's why no, they're still. By the way, yeah. thriving by the way, today. So before the studio today, M Doc goes, dude, your homework. He goes, before you meet me today, right? He goes, I'm already in Pawtucket. 
He goes, I want you to read the story about um, uh, ODB working with Mariah Carey. Have you guys ever read this? No. Tell us. So, so, <laughs> so basically, they reached out to ODB. They're like, Puff Daddy, they paid him 60 grand to remix the song. And Imagine that. I forget who Mariah Carey was married to. It was this guy, Tony something something. He was, you know, like a hit maker. And he's like, dude, we need to get that ODB guy. He'll give it a gritty vibe. Yeah. You know what I mean? For the remix. So they reach out to him and he wants 15 grand. And they're like, dude, at, at the time, a lot of fucking money. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even now. So, but they were like, you know what? Fuck it. We, we, you know, we want this record to hit. He shows up to the studio cursing his girl out, saying, I'm going to fucking kill you. He goes, and then whispering, I love you in between. <laughs> <laughs> he, he did one line. Yeah. He did one line. He passed out. <laughs> Fucking did like another line, passed out, fucking drank a bunch. Well, like he was just demanding drinks and all this shit. And then he fucking, he woke up three hours later. He goes, yo, play back what you did. It was only one fucking line. <laughs> so, so the limo takes him home. He goes home. He goes, we'll have to do it. He demands another $15,000 to finish his song, right? Does the same shit. Like fucking two more lines or something like that, right? And, or, or, or I'm sorry, he finishes the song, but he's all drunk and fucked up the whole time fucking throwing bottles on the floor, whatever, right? He took his feet off and took a nap, like, in the second one. Yeah. So then they're like, all right, the song was a, was a radio success, so they're like, we want to do a video. So he wants another 15 grand for the video. <laughs> so we're at 45 grand. And he wants a limo to pick him up. And they're like, D he's in his trailer, and they're like, all right, man, he's all passed out. They're like, dude, they're waking him up, like, bro, you got to work. Like, And he's like, they're like, do you have clothes? He's like, I don't need no clothes, right? <laughs> And fucking passes out again. They wake him up again. He goes, I can't do this shit without clothes. <laughs> so he, he takes a credit card, goes to the mall, and he's buying all sorts of Louis Vuitton luggage, like shit that has nothing to do with clothes. <laughs> so they're like, and they, they couldn't find him in the mall. So they finally found him, like, dude, and he's like, I'm gonna use it for a scene, whatever, right? And they're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so they make him buy clothes. He goes back, passes out again. <laughs> He wakes up, puts on the same shit he had on when he got there. <laughs> just like a dirty shirt, jeans and Tim's. Hell yeah. And he goes, I don't need no fucking clothes for this shit. <laughs> that's what he wore, dude. He just wasted all that fucking money. Hell yeah, dude. dude. So that, that's, like a, right that's like a short version. Oh, but yeah. anyone, dude, if you want to laugh your ass off, I mean, that's, that's, that's vintage. fucking amazing. So many good Fucking stories. amazing. Vintage, vintage old dirty bastard. Randy, yeah. that's one of your favorite artists oh, of all yeah. time, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, he is, definitely. I mean, you're talking about so not giving a fuck? Yeah. Original. And that dude really didn't give Randy a fuck. Randy got some uh, ODB artwork, too. He got the, yeah. OD, he got the ODB mask. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Randy, Randy, I, we, I think we talked about it. Randy was our first podcast yes. guest, but uh, I think we talked about it on there. If you haven't heard that episode, listen to yep. episode number, number one, one with Dirty Randy. We've we progressed a little bit since. Talk then. about tripping. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, they started. At the, so, matter how, how did you like do, compared? Do, and you've done a good amount of shows overseas now. How do you like? Uh, what's how do you compare doing shows here in the states to doing shows overseas? Dude, honestly, the the thing is, like, if I was doing this, let's say. 2010 or 2009 yeah uh it would be different it's very saturated out there so like people think oh europeans are fucking you know they buy everything and they're just impressed that you're american like no dude they have their own scenes yeah sure they yeah. have their own they have their own artists like dirty dyke uh high, high focus records from uk they're fucking huge like mm -hmm. four owls uh uh yeah, yeah. they have a couple of dudes and they're fucking dope like i love those dudes yeah. man like the, the French dudes, I mean... Hip-hop's huge uh, there's Poland, dude, I don't know their names, man. They're huge French artists, man. Yeah. Who, uh, yeah, a ger too. German artist. Yep. So they have all their own shit. Plus, they have all the fucking guys from, like, the 90s. Like, K-Solo, dudes. Yeah, you know, no disrespect. Yeah. But, yeah, like, yeah. I haven't heard a record from him in years. No, but they go over but, there. But they he, go over there, yeah. and they, they mm -hmm. tour, and they make yeah. money. Because, yeah. you know, they, they still love those records. Yeah. So it's like, dude, it's, it's hard to set up shows. Really? You know what I mean? It's hard to get paid By a fair yourself. wage, yeah. and it's very saturated. It's very, it's a very trodden um, uh, path out yeah, there. Really? It is e e everywhere. So, uh, but basically, you know, it's like it depends where you're at, man. Like, like I, I noticed, uh, you know, the German shows that they they love the more aggressive shit. Uh, France, they're more stiff crowds, and, yeah. and that's just how the French people are. They're mm -hmm. great people. Uh, some of my great friends I made are from going out there, but dude, they're harder to get into it. Really? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Sweden, we played a couple shows in little towns, man. It, it, it was weird. It depended. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, these are all such different cultures, such different people, True. most of which speak better English than us. <laughs> Yo, okay. they're more civilized. I was so glad they spoke a little English when I went over there because I was like, you don't speak by the time language. I got a little grasp <laughs> on this one, I was going to another country yeah. and like, uh, forget Fuck the yeah. last well, stuff. <laughs> but like you said, I know, and I know some bands and stuff like that and artists, they're, yeah. they're pretty big independent artists. They do well overseas. Yeah, and they do they do better there. They'll go there and play a festival in front of thirty thousand so people. That's they the come whole home thing. and do a show in front of fucking two or three hundred. They have a that, big, like trance scene now, like house music. Oh yeah, it's huge. That, that. Dude, that's yeah. the thing. So they just started booking M Dot, you know, and I opened for him. Yeah, uh, I'm one of the dudes. You know, he always brings his family. He has people who want to yeah. pay him money. He says, mm -hmm. "Fuck that, I want to travel with my homies." These dudes ride for me. That's more important than money. I can make my own money. I respect him for that. You know yeah. what I mean? Obviously, that's why I, 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 that's why I ride for him, bro. He's like that. He just started getting booked for festivals this year. Nice. We, we were supposed to do a bunch this past summer. Spain, <clears throat> Portugal, fucking, you know what I mean? And that's that's where the cake is. Yeah. That's where they're paying you, you know, really? money. Yeah, Spain's gonna and be I won't talk about it, but he, he had a couple shows where he was getting paid serious yeah. fucking money. Yeah. And, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll get them next year, whatever. But, like, dude, that's the thing. You do these little shows... So that you build a name, so that you can do the fucking festivals. Because yeah, yeah. the fe dude, once you start doing festivals, bro, you're fucking paid. Yeah, right. Yeah. That, that's I when, mean, that's when you made it. They're gonna pay, they're gonna <laughs> yeah. pay you, yeah. but you're also gonna sell the fuck out of merch. Yeah. yeah I mean, right, you're talking yeah, about right. yeah, twenty, thirty thousand people, dude. Yeah. Like, you just put a fucking hot chick over there on the table, dude. Yeah. It's all fucking drunk people. Yeah. You know, I also, I also, and you're I'm, not performing as long either, right? I don't know. On festivals, uh, they, they kind of turn over. Yeah, right? if you're not a big artist, 15 minutes. Yeah. They turn over, yeah. You know what I mean? You're doing it, you're, you're headlining a show you do at three days, a maybe. dingy club, which is mostly what we do, like two, three hundred people. Dude, you're fucking doing sometimes two hours. Yeah. Two hours. That's a long set. And dude, <laughs> we're not sleeping. You're, you're, you're like a, this is the closest to homeless I've ever been is touring. <laughs> Bro, I, I started throwing my socks out. I disgust myself. Okay? <laughs> you're around sweaty, grown ass men the whole time. You're, you're on three hours of sleep every night. And we're not partying, dude. Like, no, we're, we're not. Like, driving from country to country. Driving, to city to you're, you're traveling eight to 10 <laughs> hours a day. Yeah. And this is every fucking day, dude. If we get a day off, yeah, you burn and that and, and right, sets up a video shoot or a studio day, there <laughs> are like no, no days, days off. You're constantly fucking. grinding at that level, yeah, when you're at that well, point. Well, he, he yeah. you know, he sets these up. They're his fucking... Take yeah. advantage of you know? every moment you got. And he's like, dude, he goes, we're out here. He goes, trust me. He goes, die out here, bro. Yeah. He goes, I want to do as much shit so that when I go back home, in that three weeks, you know, I've done every radio show, every, every feature... Yeah. You know, and he'll get money for features or he'll, someone who did a feature with him or won a video while he's in, you know, like we were in like solo there in Switzerland, which is like mm -hmm. the Italian part. It's right near the border. Um, and we did a video. I remember it was like the last day of tour. And I'm like, dude, can we please just get drunk and like watch movies and like fucking make dick jokes? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, please, like please. And he's like, nah, bro. He's like, we're going to do this shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he's and he's and he's he's about his business, man. He can't get yeah. mad at that because uh, it, th 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 there's a reason I'm opening for him. Right. And it's because he's about his business, yeah. and I, I like to fuck around a little more. You know? Yeah, it's good. To, you got to be about your business, and and uh, especially DIY doing it independent like that. You know? Yeah. You, you got to because the money's coming into you, and you're handling everything. You know, you've seen it. So fuck you, yeah, you dude. Know, man. Um. So. Do you hope to get back over there at some point after this COVID thing gets under control? A absolutely, man. I mean, right now, like, you know, I got my boy uh, watching my dogs. When I get home, I just got a new house, living near the beach, um, lining up some work and shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I just am looking forward to that. No doubt. You know what I mean? I'm going to get my little studio set up there, bang some shit out. Hell yeah. Um, Are you still training dogs? Um, no, but I'm going to start. Yeah. yeah, actually, yeah. And I'm going to start what? working with the rescue. So I got this company, Black Tony Brand. Tell them. Tell them about mm -hmm. the brand. That's um, right. BlackTonyBrand.com. Basically, you know, we're doing, we're donating two pounds of food for every, every skew that we sell. Um, nice. And, you know, it's my, my dog, Tony. Obviously, it's Shout black. Out to he's, Tony. A black, he's a black pit bull, mm -hmm. yep. but basically black dogs, um, Tony likes pizza. They, they have a one in 10 chance <laughs> of getting adopted as regular dogs. Really? So there's a reason we say black, you know what I mean? Like people are like, oh, is, are you a black guy? I'm like, nah, well, clearly I'm not black, you idiot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I didn't know that. No, I'm one Asian, motherfucker. <laughs> but anyways, uh, no, so I mean like, you know, we're bringing attention to that and um, I'll get that later. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, man, we're just going to make, you know, clothes for dogs, like hoodies and shit, fucking bandanas, all sorts Word. of shit like that. So we got a site, a drop ship site. I haven't been um, as happy with them, uh, the turnaround and stuff. So, you know, we have local printers that we're working with now um, and we're going to, you know, slowly phase them out. 
you know, we still have quality shit. It's just we're going to have better quality shit. Um, but everything you buy, you know, we, we, we donate. And we're going to uh, start sponsoring dogs. I live right near the shelter. I'm six minutes. So I've already talked to them about volunteering and, and working with dogs who are a little rough around the edges. Get, get rid of some of that aggressive shit so they can get adopted. So nice. we're going to be heavy into that shit. Uh, but we're just making basically, I mean, we're like a skate urban clothing company, man. Right. And you can buy shit for you, shit for your dog. Uh, and we're going to have all types of, we have all types of dudes um, who are going to work on designs for us. Uh, Wizard is one who, oh, like, shout out to Wizard. Shout out to Wizard. So, legend, legend, and, graffiti uh, legend. I spoke with him and he's, <laughs> spoke with him, no pun intended. <laughs> uh, uh, and he, you know, he's going to work on some shit. So, dude, we're going to have all sorts of cool shit coming out soon, but we definitely got nice. some cool shit on the site now, so check it out. But What's the website that, one more time? It's called uh, blacktonybrand.com. Cool. And you were also training dogs. I, you know, he trained, he, you took Hannibal. Yeah. He, he, yeah. He, he, he was a little rough at Just first. real quick, real <laughs> Hannibal quick. Hannibal didn't have a lot of motivation. No. <laughs> and to be honest, dude, he, uh, he got, yeah, he got tired. That was one of the first bulldogs I work with. Like, really? Yeah, uh, dude. I learned, a lot. 90, 90 pounds I learned a lot. Fat I learned a lot. Yeah, I used to I used to just break it up, man. I'd be like, dude, we're doing fifteen minutes. Yeah. People are like, but it's a puppy. I'm like, dude, trust me. Just, fifteen minutes. All they can handle. <laughs> Real quick, how you know, you were doing the dog training, you were you were running a kennel out of your house at one point. Yeah. Kentland canines, I remember that. Yeah. Um just real quick. How did you, what made you get into the whole work, want to work with dogs and, and that whole Bro, process? I've I've liked dogs my whole life. We always had a dog. Um, when I started working with pit bulls and started realizing how abused this, this, this breed was, how misunderstood they were, um, it became a passion of mine. It still is. Yeah. You know, I have three pit bulls at home. They're Sorry. all rescues. Um, these dogs need help, man. You know what I mean? And honestly, it's such a rewarding thing. Like, dude, I love people as much as I love animals. I'm not one of those weirdos who's like, oh, fucking my dog's better. Because that's fucking insane, dude. You're yeah. an asshole if you think like that. But... Dogs are innocent, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it, it, they are. They're selfish. Unconditional. They're se- well, they, they, don't do know, you, they don't know any better, though. They're loyal, yeah. They're se- they're, they're in it. Even their selfishness is innocent, man. When right. you come home, they're always excited to but see But dogs you. are dope, man. Yeah. They're Cats, dope, dude. So it, it, I love dogs. It, it calms you down to have them around. I mean, some of the time, sometimes they chew some of your shit. Shout out uh, to Nala, man. She, yeah. she didn't like me for like two years. But <laughs> she probably still doesn't like nah, me. Nah, she probably doesn't. <laughs> she would like growl at me every time I would come yeah. over. And, like, But, uh... But yeah, that's the thing, man. I mean, you know, and she's calmed down. You know, Nala's 11 now. I've had her for seven and a half years. So it's like, dude, you take these dogs. That dog spent the first two years of her life, no socialization in a shelter. And she was isolated because she used to fight with other dogs. Think about how fucked up that is, man. If anyone wants to know, you know, why these dogs are fucked up, walk into a shelter. It's just dogs barking at each other. And it's just fear and anxiety. You can feel it. It's palpable. Yeah. Uh, so it's like to, to help these dogs, man, it's, a, it's, a, it's the best thing. Oh, you know, yeah. it's something that I don't care, like whatever path, um, you know, that life takes me down, uh, you know, you got to make money and survive. You know what I mean? And there are things that I like to do. I love working with anything with working with people, whether it's like bartending, whether it's, you know, working in a rehab center, whether it's doing any of this shit, whether it's, you know, I used to sponsor kids, believe it or fucking not, when I was like in college. <laughs> Like kids, you know, wow. who are DCYO. <laughs> no, but it was like, dude, it was it was yeah. kids who wanted to be rappers and shit. And I'd be like telling them, hey, man, you know, I, I sold this That's many. Good, man. I remember oh, yeah. like my first, that Dharma EP, you know, we, we sold 500 units. That was a big deal. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then I remember like, you know, selling 4,000 units. And you're like, 4,000 fucking CDs, yeah. dude? You know how yeah. fucking crazy that is? Yeah. A lot of people can't imagine that, dude. That's yourself. Right. Yourself. These aren't sitting in stores. Right, know? right. This is me hand to hand doing shows. I remember one year, dude, we did 60 shows in a year. Mm. Get the fuck out of here, dude. Yeah, man. Driving <laughs> to Maine, driving to New Hampshire, like, you know, doing, you know, and it's like, you, you know, going to fucking hippie festivals where we were the only rappers. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I've done but, shows like that, too. They're yeah. fucking awesome. Yeah, man. I Shout out to the hippies. I, I love you guys, man. <laughs> you girls, man, they're cute. They just need All to right. wash more. L- let me ask you, <laughs> <laughs> let me ask you this, like, real quick, a couple questions. Yep. Um... Favorite show of all time that you've been to as a fan? Oh, Jesus. Uh, Dexter. Okay. Dexter is my favorite fucking show, bro. Oh, yeah, Dexter, yeah. It, good. it is, it, it, it fascinates me. <laughs> I don't want to be a serial killer, but it fascinates I me. Actually meant, I actually meant hip hop shows. I actually meant hip hop shows. Oh, my favorite. Do you mean stripper show? Yeah, stripper <laughs> show. Okay. <laughs> Candace. Down Candace. On the stage. I love Candace. Uh, she's good. All right. Uh, Favorite hip hop show, man. I, I I have to say, 
one of the best ones. I mean, we we opened for Pete Rock and Seal Smooth okay. in in Kerr, Switzerland, which is like in the middle of Switzerland. Yep. It's it's in a bowl surrounded by the Alps. And getting to see them perform uh They Reminisce Over You was one of the most like legendary moments. Dude, not to be corny, one of the most magical fucking yeah. things I've ever seen. <laughs> it, it was unreal. Pete Rock and Seal Smooth, man. Yeah, but it was like we're in the middle of Switzerland. I'm tired as fuck. I haven't slept in two days. You know, MDOT almost fucking killed me the day before. <laughs> we were in an island in Finland the night before, and they couldn't wake me up to go on the fucking uh, the boat. <laughs> Dude, if you want, he'll show you the video. I've heard, I've heard, I've heard. If this was a video I've heard podcast, he'd fucking be calling in right now. I'll fucking stories. send it to you. You know, uh, that was one of the best shows. One of the other best shows, man, Dilated Peoples. When yeah. they came out with, uh, uh, not Platform, what was the second one? Uh, um, neighbor, no. Uh, worst Come to Worst? Uh, was yeah. that the name of the album? Um, Jesus. Whatever pla- that no, second platform, album was. The platform. I remember yeah. them playing at the, um, or uh, Lupos. Yeah. And it was sold out. Yeah. They were, they were that's a, it, that's what underground hip hop used uh, to do, man. Know, like, they sold out. I that, saw them open for Kanye West on the college dropout tour, Rhode Island College. That show was fucking really? crazy, dude. Yeah. yeah, and Kanye killed it too. Yeah, it was fucking sick, dude. I had one you know show. I, mean? I went on stage with like you four, live and learn. I went on stage with four beers, like just for myself. And I, I I was pounding them, dude, and I would just throw the fucking bottle into the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was an, I was at the peak of my fucking degeneracy. Probably. You thought you but thought uh, it was cool, but it was like some yeah. cornball shit. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. I've now. done a lot. Of, I've done a lot of shit. I thought it was cool. Yeah, <laughs> Crush four beers, throw. <laughs> all right, favorite favorite hip hop album of all time. Midnight Marauders, Tribe Called Quest. Right, favorite rapper of all time. <sighs> That's fucking tough, dude. Uh bro, I'd have to say, Tupac. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Tupac. Uh, what are you currently listening to? Yeah. What are you listening to right now for music? Fuck, man. I. You know what's weird, dude? I listen to a lot of fucking, a lot of heavy metal, a lot of metal. Um, because Tampa, if you guys don't know, I mean, it's home to a big Cannibal scene, Corpse, right? Morbid yeah. Angel, mm-hmm. uh, Monstrosity, like a lot of fucking dope mm-hmm. metal bands. I love metal. I love hardcore. And you introduced me to a lot of it. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Um, I switch it up, man, dude. I listen to the classics. I guess new shit. I, Man, I don't know. I don't know the last album that I was like, yo, this is so dope. But there's shit. There's, yeah, there's, there's shit, good shit coming there's out. There's shit here and there, yeah. man. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. Off the top of my head, I don't know, man. Like, I fucking, um, I would have to look at my phone to be, to be yeah, like, really look fucking Look at your playlist. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Dude, that changes every week. Yeah. This this week, I've been listening to nonfiction, The Future Is Now. Oh, yeah, classic that album. That Shout out to Lord Goat. We had you know what I mean? Yeah. But like, dude, it's such a good album. Yeah. And I've been like straight listening to that, and mm-hmm. I've been listening to uh, Pete Pete Rock's new album, Pete's Instrumentals Three. Okay, and didn't you know, know that he drop. has a lot of band and shit. I, I didn't know that. Drop. He's trying yeah. to do some like um, uh, the roots type shit. No, like some uh, some uh, fucking uh, not Rick James, uh, James Brown type of shit. Like okay. the, the, the some JBs, funk, some funk the shit. JBs. He's trying oh. to do shit like that, and he, he's. Dude, it's dope. That'd be pretty cool. I'll check it that. It depends what I'm into, man. Like, yeah. I'm all fired up this week. I'm trying not to kill people, so yeah. <laughs> I listen to calm shit. Yeah, like, I listen yeah, to yeah. nonfiction when I work out, and I'm like, I'm yeah, going to get yeah, it all yeah. out, dude. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because put on cannibal course co- and try to meditate. That's not going to work. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I got to, you know, I got to be honest, dude. I was trying to stop myself from fucking someone up, like, yeah. a couple weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I was almost did. Almost, you know what I mean? Almost fucked my shit up. So, it's sometimes, you know, you got to catch yourself and have some discipline and, uh, I'm like, I'm going to listen to some fucking Pete Instrumentals, man. Yeah, yeah. It'll put calm, you in a good calm mood, my man. ass down, yeah. smoke some weed. Hell yeah. <laughs> Not drink as much, more weed than beer. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's, you got you to gotta check yourself. So uh, what, for the foreseeable future, what, what, do you, what do you got planned? Do you know? Musically or otherwise? Yeah, yeah. and in general, music. Do you, I know you're doing so, the, the, I mean, the, the yeah, black coming like up. I, said, I, just, yeah. I, I, I just moved to a different part of Florida. I'm in Largo, which is in between uh, St. Petersburg and Clearwater. It's, it's like a beach town. It's fucking awesome, uh, you know. I'm 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 uh, just fucking working in restaurants over there. I'm gonna work on a new album. I got some shit. I don't want to talk about it right yeah, now. Yeah. Um, I am gonna definitely be working with M. Dot. Whether or not he knows it, we're doing an album and he, that he's producing. <laughs> you know what I mean? I better get a feature on that. Yeah, you got it. Um, I'm I'm doing our album, and I got something else going on. I, I was working with my boy in uh, Cologne, Germany. That do DJ Mechanic. Uh, I had been working on an album with him. So those three things. We're definitely going to have more tours coming up uh, the minute that, you know, the shit breaks it and up. it's safe for everybody yeah. to travel and, and be outside with each other again. And uh, and I'm and I'm pushing that brand heavy as fuck when I get back, man. Plug you know that one I mean? more time. Plug the brand again. Black Tony Brand. 
Black Tony www Brand. www.blacktonybrand.com. Do you have an IG for that? Yeah, oh, Black, cool. Black Tony Brand. Nice. All right, Tony Brand everything. I got so, my yeah. Uh, and then yours, what, what, you don't even have a music social media anymore. Uh, yeah, I do. It's, it's young <laughs> underscore that's taco really underscore that's underscore. Not really a, um, <laughs> that's just like that's a fucking... It. That's, that's, some that's stupid, just like a whatever that's some page. stupid fucking <laughs> He's like, not, I nickname really I made up for I myself. I love the name. Young Taco is an amazing... You would actually probably, if you changed your name to Young Taco and just did trap music and drill music, you'd probably blow up. Uh, well, that's a thought. That's, I think you should do it. Dude, I, I was it. listening to Ace Hood today. Yeah, Actually, I was listening right. to Ace Hood on the way here. I didn't know Ace Hood was still... I haven't heard anything from him since that Bugatti song. Dude, well, that song was not good, but I, I still like the I Hustle like Hard and um, Trials and Tribulations. Yeah, Ace Hood's good. I don't know. Pray For Me and all that shit. <laughs> yeah. Yo, I fuck with Ace Hood, man. Yeah. If I'm having a bad day, I'm like, I'm putting some Ace, Ace Hood. This Hood motherfucker, yeah. yo, you Ace know what? Brings you up. He got one moment, son. Word. Yeah. Well, I think I think if you do the Young Taco project, you can also have Dirty Pennies. Uh, he can, yes. he can be a hype man. A background, pennies, it's a background pennies. guy. That's that's Randy's rap that's alias. That's fucking dope. Yeah, yeah Dirty Pennies. That dude. like <laughs> that you like taste Dirty Pennies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reminds me of that shit. Uh, what was copper. that show? Bo- Boondocks. But that, that dude E Dirt. He's just covered in dirt all the time. It's like because I'm fucking dirty. You're supposed to be that dirty bastard or something. You can see uh, the green corrosion. But I got I to gotta get moving <laughs> in a couple minutes here. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know. We'll, we'll wrap it up. Randy, you got anything you want to say? Anything you want to plug? What are you doing? Uh, no, I'm chilling. Um, <laughs> no, I'm good. I mean, just still making art, doing my doing thing. Art, I, yeah. Yeah. I just put eight paintings yeah, up for yeah. sale the other day. They sold out. And fucking yeah, I see that. You started doing, the, the, you started yeah, doing the minis. Yeah, they sold out. That was a good idea, dude. What the fuck you been waiting for? I sold eight paintings. What the fuck you been waiting for? I've been telling you. I know, I know. That's a good idea. I mean, throw it out. I'll do some. I got a couple other in the works. I, I'm, I'm just staying busy. So you're back on your art grind. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing. Fuck I'm doing yeah. shit. I'm where can uh, where can people check out your art if um, they don't know? Yeah, pretty much. Just I I I do pretty well on my social media, so I don't even fuck with the website. So if it's just Randy Walsh on Facebook and um uh, the underscore dirty, dirty unicorn. unicorn on Instagram and Snapchat Randy underscore Randy made me a Roker. Dope ass fucking cool. taco painting. We'll post in my kitchen. That's we'll post fire. up all these oh, yeah. links in our in the <laughs> show description. So Thank check you. out Randy's art. Yeah, Stay yeah. tuned for what Meta P got going on. We're gonna drop some new Van Buren boy shit coming soon. Yeah. Fuck yeah! Um, thank you for having Meta. Me. Yeah, 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 no, Meta. Meta, thank you for coming. Randy, Meta, always got, a pleasure. Obviously, Meta, hold on, yeah. hold on. Meta, Meta, you got you got any parting words you want to tell the people? Um, words of wisdom, yeah. Yeah. by Meta P. Don't trust anybody. All right, um, okay. I'm back there. Those Hide all your worse. money in a mattress. Okay, <laughs> those are words to live by. <laughs> Hide the money in the mattress. Don't trust banks. <laughs> Don't trust banks. <laughs> that was from fucking heavyweights, and wasn't if you, it? If you think <laughs> someone's following you, they fucking are. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah, Matt. Thank you for coming Thank down. Thank you, brother, man. Fuck yeah, yo. We're gonna end it. Bang your head. Yeah, bang your. Oh, that's right, Matt. What's uh, introduce this track? Uh, this is off Evolution of the White Wolf 2015. Featuring Slain and my man Swan Naughty, produced by my man Faz from Australia. Shout out to Faz. He Word. did the beat for our intro. Fuck yeah. Cool, man. That's yeah. it, bro. Drop it. Drink on the soapbox. We're fucking out of here. Peace. Peace. Three Kings, Slain, Meta P, Swan Naughty. Peace to my man Faz. So you the ruler, seen the girls you bring home. Far from Queens, you call yourself a king though. For them rings, photo smash the window. Nasty Grindle, drag your ass and collapse and sink calls. I keep my mouth cement though. Why you tap the info? You cracking down, I'm tapping cracked out, fashion bimbo. It wasn't accidental. Method don't match my mental. I'm asking, take your mouth close over bow and smash it dental. Method's bad credentials, stay in your repertoire. I was meant for handling pain, I was meant for war. Hanging with my canines, name a liquor store. Crack a cock's canine, bleach your veins and lick my paws. The sickle in the sore, matted or addition for a magic trick. You stab a prick with crabs and bricks and pitch and claws. You take an inch or more, Pacino's play is raw. I take you by the fat head, aim and hit the wall. Come on, Thought you wouldn't talk till you rang the feds. Devils never stop till the angels dead. Enemies bled, all I see is red. Honestly, cousin, when we meet up, bang your head. Fuck the internet, fuck the free cred. Animals are hunting until all the meat's fed. We a pack of wolves, we a cracking skulls. Yeah. King of everything else, we will keep. Slam dance, all of your mental, leaving you all balanced. Who wanna challenge? I'm crazy with it, I'm fly, got it. See the realness of a man right there in his eye socket. The mirrors of your soul, lyrical brawl, to control, I master the flow. Permanent.
me the resident, the haters, they ask me to go. Trying to evict me, I'm sick, be bad with your will. Respect the skill, I'm on a whole new level of ill. Now that it's royalty, liberty, I destroy the beat. I only build for the song. As far as words, I ignore the weak. They only make excuses. This and I can't do this. You got a blessing to use it and let it flow like it's fluid. Fuck a battle, you wanna come and get it. Take it a stride. Up the extra long class, your glass, breaking your five, mix your puzzle up. Take it the game, fuck with your physical. Smart night, the king poet, call me the general. So you wouldn't talk till you rang the bed. Devils never stop till the angels dead. Enemies bled, all I see is red. Honestly, cousin, when we meet up, bang your head. Fuck the internet, fuck the free cred. Animals are hiding until all the meat's fed. We a pack of wolves, we a cracking skulls. The king, king of, of everything out, we will keep. The back row, rock for the underdog kids in my city getting hassled. Corner running track, putting smack in the crack of the asshole. I'm never going back though. Laughed at the math while you bastards are baffled. Mastered my craft as a passionate wacko. Crew roll tighter than the afro and acro. Spock the cigar full of cash roll tobacco. Back with that rap flow, this is in my blood. Took it from the bottom of the dishes in the suds. Bitches on my nuts, say I'm vicious with the drugs. Still couldn't kill me cause this is what I was. Back in the flesh, filthy and scarred. Persistent and defiant, yeah, I'm guilty as charged. Bag full of cash stashed in Billy's garage. With my eyes on the prize, I can still see the stars. Thought so you wouldn't talk till you rang the bed. Devils never stop till the angels dead. Enemies bled, all I see is red. Honestly, cousin, when we meet up, bang your head. Fuck the internet, fuck the free cred. Animals are hunting until all the meat's fed. We a pack of wolves, we a cracking skulls. King of everything else, we will keep.